Hey guys, so today I would like to share with you a program which I started using recently this year in fact. It's a reasonably new piece of software that has solved a problem that I've had with using Linux as my primary operating system ever since I began using it and that's the problem of finding a good piece of screencast software. Now there are quite a lot that quote unquote do the job. The one that most operating systems are including with them now is Kazam and that's quite good but there's a real big problem with Kazam is that if you record a video that's too long, the um, memory fills up and the si your system starts becoming incredibly unusable. It's very bad for doing things like let's plays or extended videos, but it's not too bad at doing short five or ten minute videos that don't take up a lot of space, so uh, short screencasts. However, for anything longer, there does seem to be a uh, gap in the market, as it were, for a, well, fraps, but for Linux. So the idea of, of having not, not only a screencast software, but screencast software that can record things like games. And even though there isn't a direct fraps for Linux, there are some projects I know that are working on it. This is one of them. Um, but as it currently stands, this is by far the best bet. Now, what I mean by this program here, which is called Simple Screen Recorder, which is a name that puts itself down anyway, but um, is that if you open it up, as you got here, and this is the the, the opening screen for it. You can find out more on the website which you can see here by clicking on the link there and I'll also include a link down in the description is that you can record the entire screen a fixed rectangle, follow the cursor or record OpenGL Experimental. So this program is working on getting OpenGL up and running and I can't wait to see that day at the moment. It doesn't quite work for me and part of that is because it does take a lot of time to tweak it and work it out and all this kind of stuff and I hope in future editions of the program they'll actually be able to, to make it a lot more user-friendly so I probably could uh, be able to get OpenGL uh, recording in the way that they want there uh, in, the, in, in the way that's recommended there but I can't so I, I tend to record uh, a fixed rectangle here and uh, and I do that for games as well and providing and because this computer is quite powerful it's powerful enough to be able to take the uh, CPU processing hit and so forth um, it doesn't present too much of a problem which means you know so I've had no real incentive to work out how to record just OpenGL things but as it currently stands this can record uh, programs the desktop you can also record games it can record games quite well although you do have to even if you're not going to use the OpenGL functionality which like it says there is experimental you can by setting a few key parameters get it to record games quite well if you have a semi-decent PC and this was top of the range when I got it about three years ago now and I've updated it slowly but surely ever since then so it's it's sort of the high range but it's certainly not the top range PC that I'm using here now um, but if you record using um, the MP4's H.264 codec along with uncompressed audio recording then you can record things uh, pretty, pretty, you know, using pretty small amounts of CPU. Now when I do record games using on Linux uh, I record my sound separately using the Tascam device which I believe I've showed to you guys before. Basically it's a sound recorder, much more high quality than that and it works separate from the computer altogether and then I, I layer the two up in, uh, in post-processing. So um, that is the settings that I use for getting the most bang for your buck uh, when it comes to recording games. And I also use that for recording screencasts because the, the settings are one and the same. Um, and because once you reprocess it, using an uncompressed audio and uncompressed uh, and, and a very low rate of compression on the video, uh, you can uh, re recompress later on down the line. And it gives you lots of different, uh, gives you shortcut keys, hotkeys, things like that. And it, this is really the only program available for Linux that comes anywhere close to being what we need for a fraps on Linux. Um, it's very, very good. My only problem, or worry with it rather, is that um, it's not currently part of the Ubuntu uh, repository list, which I hope it does become soon. Uh, because it's it's really um, filling a void in the so-called Linux application market um, and I would love to see that and you know I do hope that this is a continued project because this is something that Linux sorely sorely needs and yeah my concern is that this is the, the, the a lot for me at least in terms of me doing a lot of videos as I, as I do on YouTube a lot hangs in the balance of this piece of uh, software working out uh, because if this goes under, that means I'm going to have to go back to Windows for recording a lot more things that I would otherwise record in Linux. So guys, um, if you do happen to use Linux, then definitely check out this piece of software. Even though it's not part of the Ubuntu uh, repositories, I'm of course running Linux Mint here and it works just fine with no tweaking whatsoever. I just followed the, um, the download instructions, which you can see here. 
And it's as simple as just copy and pasting that into the terminal, which is one of the things that I absolutely love about Linux is that you don't have to, when, when you have instructions on how to fix a problem or how to do something, you don't have to do click here, click there, click there, and then include a whole bunch of screenshots. You just have to copy and paste something into a terminal which works pretty damn well so guys that's about it from here uh, from from me uh, but please definitely if you're a Linux user check out this piece of software uh, it's my primary recording software now on Linux and I don't know what I'd do without it I'd probably have to revert back to Windows but the number of things that Linux can do better than Windows is growing at a rate of knots now especially considering Steam is now available cross-platform and once Steam OS um, gets off the ground, that'll pretty much mean that my Windows partition will therefore become redundant. So once I've got uh, once I've got a decent bit of recording software to go, uh, I can pretty much give up Windows for good um, because at the moment I dual boot. I've got two one terabyte drives, one for Windows, one for Linux, and I use Linux three out of every four days. So it's definitely the predominant operating system that I'm using, but I would love to get rid of Windows completely, especially considering that Windows 8, gotta say, not a fan. And uh, and Windows is a company across the board when it comes to the Xbox One, which has got pretty terrible reviews from what I've seen. It's, um, its phones are laughable. Um, and the only thing that's really holding, that Microsoft's holding on to now at the moment is, um, is its operating system. And um, it's going to lose a massive chunk when Steam OS comes out because anyone that has a gaming PC that's only used for gaming will presumably switch to uh, Steam OS because Linux does process um, games better when when games are designed for Linux better. I've, I've found Linux to be much more stable and much more efficient with lower end hardware. Um, and also the customizability is going to be absolutely fantastic. And um, and Linux can pretty much fill in the in the gaps. And Linux, of course, allows you to set up an operating system uh, as you wish. I've still got the old Windows 95 style bar at the bottom of my screen because they worked out what worked over 10 years ago. So, um, you know, why mess? With? Well, over 15 years ago, coming up to almost 20. So, yeah, but they, they worked it out. They've done it. Um, but Linux, of course, keeps updated with... Uh, with all the various uh, niceties that we've come to expect from modern day computer operating systems. Anyway guys, so that's just something that I wanted to let you know about and I guess a little rant against Microsoft. So uh, that's about it for me today, thank you very much for watching and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.